This weird keyboard has been my daily driver for more than two years now. I've tried so many other keyboards, but none can quite match up. But now the maker of Glove 80 has released another keyboard called Go 60. And finally, after trying so many keyboards, now my favorite is still the Glove 80. That's not because Go 60 is inferior to Glove 80. Go 60 is actually better than Glove 80 in many ways. And we're gonna talk about all of those. We're also gonna talk about why it's not my new daily driver. If you like this type of content, do not hit the subscribe button unless you're also interested in software development, which is what this channel is mostly about. We don't need to force this whole thing. If you do like software development though, yeah, cool, hit the subscribe button, but also configure one of your thumb keys to take you directly to the channel page. This video is not sponsored by MoErgo, but they did very kindly send me this board for review. They did not get to see this video before I posted it. That should be pretty obvious at this point. The Go60 product page has testimonials from some very prestigious individuals. An author, a software developer, a seasoned keyboard reviewer, and apparently I am just known for spending a ton of money on keyboards. I mean, they're not wrong, but come on, maybe software developer or Rustation? I don't know. Quick background for those who don't know, Go60 is in a category of keyboards that we call split ergo keyboards. I've tried calling them next-gen keyboards, I got corrected. They give your wrists a more natural angle, and for me, they take a lot of strain off my upper back. Most of them do away with the traditional row stagger of the typewriter layout, so key columns are placed better for each finger. Of course, all of this takes some getting used to, but once you kind of get over that hump, it is really, really hard to go back. Go 60 and Glove 80 both use a type of key called chocks. Compared to regular keys, they're smaller and you don't have to push down quite as far to trigger a key press. Go 60 does not have key wells like Glove 80. For me, that makes it slightly less comfortable, but not uncomfortable by any means. Key wells are somewhat uncommon, even in split ergo boards. They just give your wrist a more neutral angle when typing, and they also reduce the distance your fingers need to travel and just add an extra notch of comfort. Glove 80 comes with this really nice case, but it's pretty big, and in this backpack, it takes a sizable chunk of the space. Gotta make sure I have enough room in the bag for the bare necessities. Consequently, Glove 80 usually gets left at home when I travel. Now, portability is one of the Go 60's main features, and it delivers on that. The Go 60 case is what I've been wanting for a very long time now. You put both halves in, the bottom of the board becomes the outside of the case, and you kind of use this Velcro strap, loop it around, tie it back, and boom, there you go. Why am I not in focus? That is extremely compact. I mean, compare this to this. This board is great for portability. Portability is one thing, but the other huge, huge advantage of Go 60 over Glove 80 is that it has built-in touch pads. This is huge. Well, actually they're pretty small, but not having to move a hand back and forth to the mouse or touchpad feels luxurious. It's especially great for non-desk surfaces. By default, the one on the right acts as your mouse and the one on the left is your scroll wheel. Pretty sensible defaults, but yes, you can configure them to do other things too. I know some of you will not sleep until the left one controls the speed of your CPU fan or something like that. For tracking movement, you can only choose from cursor movement or scroll, but the tap gesture can be configured to do pretty much anything. When using it, I did get some false taps where I put my finger down to move the cursor and it registered as a mouse click and also the other way around. But I don't really fault the device for that because I think it's just something you kind of have to get a feel for. Check out the gorgeous walnut palm rests. I wasn't actually sure at first, but it turns out they're real wood. I believe you can get the Go 60 with or without these. At the time I'm recording this, I don't know what the exact pricing is, so check Moyergo's website for that. The Glove 80 palm rests are great too, but they have a slight amount of flex to them when you press down. Nothing that's going to affect the typing experience, but some might prefer the more solid feel of the Go 60 ones. The cool thing about these is they actually snap onto the board magnetically. When I was putting it together for the first time, I didn't know about that, and all of a sudden these two pieces just like stuck together. For a few seconds I was very confused, but yeah, magnetism. They elevate your hands to about the same level as the keycaps, so your wrist angle is similar to what it would be with Glove 80. Maybe not quite as good, but it's pretty close. The palm rests are pretty large, and it seems like the general thought is that they don't come with you when you take the board traveling, but if you do want to take them with you, they come with this carrying bag. Go 60 is great in, shall we say, non-desk environments, such as a bed or a couch. I'd thrown out my back and was bedridden for a week around the time Moergo sent me what was then the prototype Go 60, and it turned out to be absolutely perfect for that time because 
I spent a week in bed, but I got a ton of work done. Glove 80 isn't the best on unstable surfaces because of its legs. Kind of relatable, honestly. This Ghost 60 has plum blossom switches, which I am extremely happy with. They are pretty easily the best linear chalk switch I've ever used. Maybe the best chalk switch I've ever used, period. I also really like sunsets, but that's a louder tactile switch. These are incredibly quiet and have a really great sound. They're just not quite loud enough to make your office mates hate you. To accomplish that, you need clicky switches. The other switch option you have when ordering is Cherry Blossom, which has a lower actuation force. That just means you don't need to press as hard to register a keystroke. When Glove 80 first came out, there were three switch options, red linears, brown tactile, and white clicky, all from Kale. One of the downsides of Glove 80 is that the switches are not hot swappable, which seems to be a technical constraint due to the key wells. I tried to make my Go60 layout as similar as possible to my Glove 80 layout. My biggest learning is that thumb keys are habit forming. I have trouble going back to three. I've heard really great things about ZSA Voyager, but two thumb keys, how? Anyway, I had to move my shift key to a place I'm not used to using this key down here as kind of a fourth thumb key. I don't know if it's intended to be used that way. It took some getting used to, but eventually I got it. You can connect Go60 via USB or with Bluetooth, I'm far too wired to use Bluetooth. I didn't even test it, honestly. I'm sure it's great. I know Bluetooth on Glove 80 works really well. You can switch between four different devices and Go60 has the exact same feature. Let's talk about tenting. Tenting is where you angle the halves outward to make things more comfortable. I have personally never needed that, but if you're a tenter, the Go60 has a pretty nice tenting system. You just stack these magnetic spacer things to get the angle you need. So obviously I like this board a lot, but like I said, right now I don't see it as my daily driver. I think the Glove 80 is a little more comfortable and I really like six keys per thumb. I don't travel a ton, so portability is more of a nice to have than a bare necessity. Things I like more about Go 60, the portability, the wood palm rests, the built-in tracking devices, and the imperviousness to unstable surfaces. Is the Go 60 a great keyboard? 100% yes. Is it the best board for you? Well, that depends. If you dislike chalk keys, you're not going to like anything MoErgo offers, but if you still want a key well, I highly, highly recommend a Kinesis. Advantage 360 is great. If you don't want a key well or you want to go more minimalist, I'm still a pretty big fan of the Korn. But if you like chalks and you want something more portable than Glove 80 or you don't like key wells, Go 60 could be your end game. It is a fantastic, fantastic keyboard. If you wanna see my original keyboard journey, check out this video. I do talk about Glove 80 in that one, but this other one is entirely about Glove 80. Let me know down in the comments which you think is better. Go 60, Glove 80, Kinesis, Stigma, Korn, Typewriter. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.